Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Engagement Designer Demo Series. In the last episodes, we talked about each of the individual tabs here within the Administration Council. I highly recommend, if you haven't seen those, to go back to the, the previous videos to look at how each one of these tabs is used to effectively, effectively administer and change information that run within your workflows, as well as debugging them and watching them run in real time through the Instances tab. If you've already seen all these videos, we're now moving on to the Engagement Designer development tool, and we'll show how we can develop workflows using Engagement Designer. In the upper right, you'll notice there's the Engagement Designer button in the Administration Console here. Clicking on it is going to open a new browser tab within my internet browser here, and this is going to take me to the Engagement Designer tool itself. If we give it one second here, it's going to load the Engagement Designer tool. And here we are, finally reaching the Engagement Designer tool where we'll do all the development of our workflows within Engagement Designer. Every time you open the Engagement Designer, if you haven't opened from a copy through the Administration Console, all of your workflows will start with a blank canvas, a blank white canvas like this. And that's exactly what we're gonna call this middle section here, the canvas. In the upper left, you'll always see a start node, a variables node, and a properties node. Those will always appear on every blank canvas you have or any currently saved workflow canvas that you have. On the top, you'll see there's the button for new. Clicking on new will open a new window, allowing you to create a new workflow, choose from a template of currently created workflows, or even open a draft from the saved drafts that we showed within the workflow drafts tab of the administration console. Clicking, uh, clicking on choose from template will give you a list of templates that you have saved within your administration console. These templates will allow you to, instead of reinventing the wheel, have a current list of tasks and running executable workflows that you can import within your Canvas here so that you don't have to recreate certain things like maybe global variables or a start, a start path that you always have in the beginning of all of your workflows. It's important to know that templates help save on a lot of time of development of workflows because you can have things that you define as you know you need before everything runs. So it's important to know that you can have templates of workflows. I'll click cancel. Another way of uh, looking at this new button here is that you can open from the draft of, from repository. This will open the file schema that we saw within the workflows drafts tab of the administration console. And we can see in here a little file system that allows you to save your workflows within folders. My folder is saved within this folder here and then under my username right here. This is a saving of all of the workflows that I've ever created within this lab environment, as well as folders that I've created under my folder. If I wanted to open a specific workflow that I've already created, I could do so from here. But for now, I'm gonna stick with the blank canvas. Lastly, you can also click on create new workflow. If you have something else open, it'll create an, a blank canvas workflow. Also in the top toolbar here, you'll see the name untitled in parentheses edited. Untitled is there because I have not named the workflow that I've opened within this window here. And it is in parentheses edited, letting me know that I've made changes since I've opened this workflow. If I were to click this drop down arrow here, I get the option to save the workflow and save as. If I click save the workflow, it's gonna prompt me to save it under a folder and give it a name. If I were to already given this workflow a name, I could use the save as, save as function to give it a different name somewhere down the road. Save as is helpful for when you open a workflow that may not be yours and want to make some changes to it to modify it to make it your own and want to save it as something else instead of overriding somebody else's work. For this example, I'm going to click on save workflow and then I'm going to go to my folder and save the workflow so that I have a current save copy of this workflow that I'm creating here. Go to YouTube Breeze Lessons, and then we'll call it First Created Workflow. It's important to know that your workflow name is only should only be named as uh, alphanumeric characters. So it should only be letters and numbers, as well as you can do underscores, but it's highly recommended against, or highly, uh, you know, highly advised against doing that. From this page, I forgot to mention that you can also search 
under this and you can even search for different drafts throughout here so if i were to search by my name i would start to see lists of created workflows created workflows that i've listed with my name in the title so going back and saving my workflow under my name youtube breeze lessons i could also create a new folder if i wanted to but for now i'm just going to use first created workflows my name and save it under youtube breeze lessons and click save i'll see that the untitled then changed the name to first created workflow from the top the next button is validate validate is used to check for syntax errors within your workflow it is important to know that the window from the bottom will pop up showing errors and warnings from engagement designer you can deploy workflows with warnings but you cannot deploy workflows with errors warnings are giving listings such as maybe a warning against an infinite loop a warning against maybe a missed calculation. So it's allowing you to deploy with warnings, but errors are showing syntax errors and you will not be allowed to deploy the workflow if you have an error within it. Here it's showing an error saying that there is no end found after the start node. That's just saying that after my start node here, there is no end node to end my workflow. So it is not valid. I will not be able to deploy it. To deploy it. If my workflow was valid in this case, I could click on the deploy button and the deploy button will allow me to deploy this workflow for execution within the administration console and allow me to route it using the routing tab in administration console. But because it is not valid, I cannot deploy it. The last button at the top bar here is the administration console tab. This will allow me to click on it and take me back to the administration console. Otherwise, if I keep the tab open, I can just switch between browser tabs and go from the administration console to the engagement designer tool. The next toolbar below has the button import. Import allows me to import exported files from this engagement designer tool because the one to the right is export as. If I were to click on export as I'm allowed to export my workflow workflow file here as an XML file or a .svar file which is an Avaya Breeze executable file. .xml is a standard um, VXML nomenclature which is something that some coders may be familiar with. And so if I were to export my file here as an XML or .svar, I could then import my workflow work within another system. So importing and exporting is a nice functionality to have if you're working on a workflow that you may need to share across systems. The next button is preview workflow. Preview workflow will open a simple JPEG style preview of your workflow. So you can see here, I just have a simple uh, variables node, properties node, and start node that I had. But if my workflow is more complex, it gives you a nice high level overview of a visual of your workflow. It will not be executable from this window. As I said, it'll just be a nice standard way to take good JPEGs of your workflow. The next button is the debug button. Debugging runs just like any other, uh, uh, any other software uh, creation tool or application creation tool where you could, without even having to deploy, you could debug your workflow within this engagement designer tool here. Since I do not have anything currently listed after my start node, debugging won't do me any good, but we'll get to that later. Off to the right, you have the capability of doing things such as alignment. You can show and hide the grid if you want to do special alignments to make your workflows nice and neat. You can also zoom and zoom in and zoom out, but it's important to know that when zooming and zooming, zooming in and zooming out of a workflow in the canvas here, you'll see there's the read only after the percentage. That is because editing is only available at 100%. This is just a functionality that allows you to zoom in if you want to get really close and see finer detail or zoom out if you need to see the bigger picture within your canvas here. You'll notice in the lower left, I have my zoom view. My zoom view gives me a good distinction of where I'm looking around my workflow and allows me to see expansion outside my potential canvas here. If I were maybe on the left hand side here and my workflow kept expanding and expanding to the right. This zoom view lets me know where within my workflow I'm currently looking. You can always reset the zoom by clicking on this button here, which will take you to 100%. Because like I said, workflows are only editable within 100% zoom. The button after the zoom functionality is the settings button. And currently the only setting within a ViaBreeze 3.5 is autosave, which will autosave your workflow every 15 minutes. This is very helpful when it comes to doing long developments and changes within a workflow that you may or may not forget how to save or forget to save. This autosave may save you by allowing you to save a workflow every 15 minutes and saving it by this name that you have at the top bar here, 
where mine is first created workflow. Just to the right of the settings button is the help dropdown. The help dropdown gives you a list of all the documentation that you currently have for this uh, Avaya Breeze uh, cl cluster right here. So this cluster currently has these tasks and bundles installed. We went over bundles a little bit in the bundles tab of the administration console. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend going back to that video to see how you can handle adding and removing bundles within your Avaya Breeze cluster. Here we're showing the different documentation for all the different bundles currently installed with this lab. You can also look at the about to get the information of your current deployment of Avaya Breeze Engagement Designer. As you see here, we have version 3.5.0.0.46007. From the help, it's important to know that you can click on the core tasks to see all the tasks that are currently used using the Avaya Engagement Designer that are currently included with the offer definition of Avaya Engagement Designer. These are all the standard tasks that come with Engagement Designer and tasks that everybody will get used to because these are the ones that come standard with Engagement Designer. Anything beyond the standard tasks will be included in any of these bundle help tabs right here. As you can see, we have one for Zang tasks Zang, a subsidiary of Avaya, is something that is developed separately than standard tasks that come with Engagement Designer. So you can see that there's a different set of documentation for the Zang tasks. On the left here, we have the palette. And the palette is a listing of all of the folders that hold each one of the tasks, nodes, and gateways that are included with the bundles that we saw within the Bundles tab of the Administration Console. It's important to note that each one of these folders listed with the tasks in here directly correlates with the help dropdown and the listed information in the help dropdown for that bundle. So the Zang folder there directly correlates with the Zang tasks help where I can get information based on each one of those tasks within that folder. Each one of these tasks can be dragged in and onto the canvas in order to create your workflow. We'll go through creating each one of the workflows later, but for now it's important to know that these folders within the palette are what hold all of your tasks and your nodes and your gateways. In the next video, we're going to cover what the difference is between a task, a node, and a gateway is. Mm -hmm.